Hi everyone. Today we will briefly talk about compound grids. Similar to a baseline grid, compound grids add a horizontal rhythm to the vertical rhythm created by the baseline grid. This grid also expands over the entire page and spread. In short, it is like designing graph paper for your design where all your elements align to the grid. A compound grid takes into account all the elements of a page. For example, the margins and the text area, the header and the footer, column widths, the gutters, the letting and the baseline. It can even help with indents and tabs, and even the page size. We have already seen compound grids in use in examples throughout the class. For instance, we have seen in this example with a golden section where individual cells are grouped together in numbers relating to the Fibonacci sequence and golden ratio. We can also see it in use in the Van der Graaff canon where the page is divided into multiple of three, six, nine, and 12 columns and rows. By using a compound grid, we guarantee that all elements are in proportion. All elements are multiples of a smaller unit. Sometimes it can restrict placement possibilities, but it simplifies the decision-making process. So what are ways we can construct a compound grid? There are two main ways we can construct a compound grid. The primary approach to construct a compound grid is by using square cells, where the width and height of each cell are the same. This pulls together the horizontal rhythm and the vertical rhythm, creating a sense of consistency throughout the page. We see this in the Fibonacci golden ratio example. In this method, the smallest unit is generally the letting and baseline grid. The letting informs the margins, gutters, columns, width, and other elements of the page. All your layout elements are multiples of the body copies letting. Perhaps your inner margin is two times the letting width and the outer margin is three times. That can also be the case with your header and footer. Your gutter width is also your letting. The second approach is to create a grid by subdividing the page. We see this in the Van der Graaff example. In the Van der Graaff canon, the page is divided into 3rd, 6th, ninth, or even 12th. In this method, we can fit the letting into the cells in the subdivision. Perhaps each cell can contain 4 or 5 lines. This gives us a grid that is not too fine and easier to use. Dividing the page until the height of each cell reaches the body copy's letting often leads to too fine of a grid. We can see how I use subdivisions in this example. Notice how each cell has two lines of text. All right, so how do we construct a compound grid? So first off, we want to start with our initial design, uh, which means we start with our page size and the overall layout. And of course, we want to really look at the letting and decide what our body copy's letting will be. In this example here, I have chosen a letting of 14 over 19 points. So 19 points is going to be the main unit of my compound grid. So from here, what we want to do is we want to go into Preferences Grids. So in Mac OS, it'll be under File, and in Windows, it'll be under Edit. So we'll go to Grids, and we'll just go in there, and a pop-up window will open. So we will not look at the baseline grid yet. We'll come back to that later. And what we want to do in, is in our document grid, we just want to put in our letting here. So 90 points. And remember, subdivisions should be 1 and not 0, because you can't divide by 0. So we'll just put in... 1, and again, 19 points, and 1 again. Uh, we're going to keep grids in back, clicked off, uh, because we want to see the grid as much as we can. So we'll hit OK, and then we'll reveal our document grid. So we'll just go into View, Grids and Guides, and Show Document Grid. And then you can see here that it kind of works. Um, you can see, however, that the grid is not symmetrical on both pages. So what we'll want to do is we want to move the grid to either start at the cell or be in the middle. So we'll try starting the page uh, document grid in the middle, and that looks really good. Um, but you can also see, if that doesn't work out, you can also put in the middle right here, and you can see that really works as well. Uh, so you just want to choose which one fits your initial design most. For me, it looks like um, in the middle works. So I'm just going to leave it here, and it looks really good. So from here, with this open, what we can do is we can just adjust our grid, our margins and columns, to fit the grid. So we'll just go into Layout, Margins and Columns, and we'll just nudge the, the guides to fit the compound grid. So here we have 57, and then for our bottom grid, we will pull it up to here, and we'll just match it up right there, and our inside grid, is 38 and we'll just nudge this one to match up with the grid as well and voila 
Now we'll just adjust our design a little so that it fits into the grid. Um, so we'll, we'll match up our text to the baseline or the compound grid and ditto with the other page right here. And then we'll match up our text block with the content block as well. So just fix that up just like that. And then from here, what we want to do is we just want to adjust our baseline grid now. So we'll go into our grids again. So preferences grids. And then in our baseline grid, we're going to have it start at zero. Um, so you can insert zero there if it's not already. Uh, and then we'll have it stop, start at the top of margin. And here, again, we just want to put our letting into there. All right, so now we want to just reveal our baseline grid. So we'll just go uh, show baseline grid, which, and then if you don't see it, it's probably just you need to zoom in. And then we can see right now that our baseline grid is perfectly aligned with the compound grid. Um, so you can turn them on and off, and you can see there. And there you have it. You have a grid that pulls all the elements together, and everything is in relation to each other. If you want, you can even adjust the page sizes, um, but if, you, if not, that is all right too. There you have it. All right, that ends today's session on compound grids. I hope you've learned something. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.